Hello everyone, welcome to a new series for developers who are interested in developing with Experience Cloud and Lightning Web Runtime Sites. In our ninth episode, we will look at authenticated and unauthenticated access for LWR sites. Depending on the type of site that you want to deploy, you will either have a site that is available to anonymous users, like the AZ Insurance Marketing site, or you will have a site that is only available to a user behind a login. The LWR template is the first template that allows you to specify this during setup. We're here in the creation visit for a new LWR-based experience site. What is different to any other provided template is that you can provide the authentication type during the setup process. You choose an unauthenticated site if you want to provide public access to your site, like any other website, and if you want to provide an experience that should require a login or authentication, well, you choose the authenticated option. Note that you can't change this afterwards for your site in the user interface. Now, the authentication type reflects also as a visible distinction for your end users. You may be used to be able to identify experience cloud sites by the slash s that is contained in the URL. For LWR sites, there's a new distinction. The slash s is still present for authenticated sites, but for unauthenticated sites, it's not. That is, to allow you to create truly consumer-facing URLs like slash marketing get a quote instead of slash marketing s get a quote. And you can also check the authentication type in the experience bundle metadata of your site. Here is a side-by-side -side of the experience bundle configurations. On the left, for the marketing side, the authentication type is set to unauthenticated. The base pass for the marketing site is also just marketing. And on the right, for the agent portal, the authentication type is set to authenticated, which then means that the base path will contain the mandatory slash s. And in case you want to allow guest users to access certain pages for an authenticated site, you can set the authentication type to authenticated with public access enabled. And there are two ways to actually set this. Back in Experience Builder, we can go to Settings, General, and set the checkbox for public can access the site. And as we're working with a Salesforce DX project and metadata, we can also set it that way. So let's swap to Visual Studio Code and check out the network settings for a site. That contains the, well, not so intuitive metadata name and our guest chatter, which is the counterpart of public can access a site. And what I also want to highlight here is the metadata setting enable guest file access, which you have to set to allow guest users to access file assets. And that also includes assets from Salesforce CMS, which we used in a previous video. What we haven't talked about yet is what unauthenticated users can do on your site. Those users are also called guest users, and Experience Cloud Sites provide a specialized profile for it, the guest user profile. This is not specific to LWR sites and also applies to Experience Cloud Sites in general. To access a profile, you actually have to open it from Experience Builder. Once we click on it, we are directed back to the profile editor page, just for the guest profile. And this is where you can then specify if guest users will have special permissions, like accessing data in your environment. Working with profiles and guest user permissions is an exhaustive topic. Check out the description where we'll link to learnexperiencecloud.com as well as to the product documentation, which both give you insights on how to work with this profile. There's one more thing. You may want to work in a programmatic way with a guest user profile. And that's possible as everything is stored as metadata. When you look at the metadata of our sample app, you will notice that it contains profile and network metadata. The name of the profile is built by the name of the site plus the word profile. With this mapping in mind, it is possible to retrieve and deploy the guest user profile from a Salesforce environment to allow repeatable and testable deployments for your sites. And that's it what you have to know about authenticated and unauthenticated site options for LWR sites. Thanks so much for viewing and see you next and for the last time when we talk about the experience bundle and its deployment for LWR sites. Never miss an episode by subscribing and turning on your notifications.